Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R530 server. Today's video is going to focus specifically on memory. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R530 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video series useful, click that like, smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. This video is going to be focused specifically on memory. Uh, we're going to go over the different types, sizes, speeds. We're actually going to show you how to install the upgrade, uh, the different memory channels, all that good stuff. So uh, let's just go ahead and hop in. With the R530, it accepts DDR4 memory. There are 12 DIN slots inside. There's a number of different sizes you can use. You can go as low as a 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, 32 gig, or all the way up to 64 gig. I do know that uh, Dell spec sheet doesn't say that 64 gigs are supported. However, we have actually tried, and even with V3s, you can put in 64 gigs, and we'll touch on that in a little bit more here in a second. Uh, there's a number of speeds you can use. You can use 2133, you can use 2400, or you can use 26. 666. Technically, you can even put in 2933 uh, or uh, 3200, but the true fastest speed you're going to get is 2400. So 2666, 2933, and 3200 will all clock down to 2400, and that's only if you have a V4 proc in. If you have a V3 proc in, you can actually only get 2133, and that's it. That's the max speed that you're going to be able to get. But just know that going into it, uh, it will depend on the proc that you have, okay? And that brings us to what type of RAM does the PowerEdge R530 support? Well, there's two types of RAM. There's ECC registered, also known as an RDIM, and there's load reduced, known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, the max that you're going to be able to get is 384 gigabytes via 1232 gigs at 2400 speed. Whereas with load reduce, you're actually going to get twice the scalability, and you can use those 64 gigs that we were talking about, and you can get 768 gigabytes using 1264 gigs at 2400 speed. And again, to get the 2400 speed, just make sure you have a V4 proc. So, all right, now that we know a little bit more about the types of RAMs, the speeds, the sizes, all that good stuff, I want to show you actually how to install it. Um, if you're not maxing it out, which DIMM slots do you actually put it in? Uh, but before I do, I'm going to grab my ESD gloves and be right back. All right, got my ESD gloves on, so let's go ahead and make sure our latch is set to unlock. <coughs> Pop it open. All right, so um, I did want to point out before I remove the air baffle, it does um, list a few good things here that's very helpful. Uh, it tells you, you know, this is CPU 1, this is CPU 2. Um, it might be hard to see on camera, but it even labels all of the DIMM slots. Um, so it shows you that you start over here at A1, um, it shows you A2 next, it shows you coming on the outside, A3, A4, which we'll show you in a minute, but everything is labeled on here. So if you were just to take this and put it to the side, uh, it's really kind of a helpful guide. It's also labeled on the motherboard, but but you know, just wanted to point out all the you know the resources that you have at your disposal while you're in here. So, all right, we're going to remove the air baffle. We're just going to lift it straight up, okay? And when you lift it straight up, um, you just do note there's a lot of cables uh, and stuff around. There's capacitors on the board. Uh, just try not to drag it or anything. Just pull it straight up and get it out of the way, okay? All right, so uh, as we discussed, there are 12 dim slots. And you might have thought it was six DIMMs per CPU. That would make sense, right? That's not how this is actually set up. So CPU 1 controls the eight DIMM slots up here, and CPU 2 controls the four DIMM slots back here. Very interesting setup. With CPU 1, there are four memory channels, and there are two DIMMs per channel. With CPU 2, there are also four memory channels, but it's one DIMM per channel. And you'll notice you can actually tell by the color coding on the, the memory tabs. Every time you see a white tab, that is the start of a new channel. So the white tab is the first slot in the channel, and the black tab is the second slot in the channel. So that's uh, one helpful uh, way of looking at it, and that's uh, uh, the way that you would actually want to do it is to um, spread your modules evenly across all the channels. Okay, So if you're not maxing this out, let's just say you have one CPU and you want to put in four 16 gigs and get 64 gigabytes or something to this uh, effect, Okay, you'd want to put it in the four uh, white DIMM slots. So right, uh, let me go back here, we can probably see it better on camera. So right here, this white DIMM slot is A1. So this next white DIMM slot right here is A2. And come to the outside over here, this is A3 and this is A4. So again, the four white slots are the starts of uh, the channel and those would be the first four places you put your DIMMs. Now if you um, didn't have a second CPU, you'd want to come back over here, uh, A5 
A6, circle back to the outside, A7, A8. Now, you probably have two CPUs if you're running the 530, so instead of actually putting them in the black slots, uh, what I would recommend after you fill up the first four white slots is coming over here and using the, the new channels over here in uh, CPU2. Uh, you have B1 on the outside, B2, and then swing over here to the outside, B3, and B4. And I would recommend if you're running two CPUs, and let's say you're only putting in eight DIMMs and you're not putting in 12, putting them in all the white dim slots, uh, leave the black dim slots empty. The Really the only time you should fill the black dim slots if, is if you're maxing it out and putting in uh, 12 dims as a whole. And I guess you don't technically have to max it out to put in 12 dims, but I meant in the sense of filling up all the dim slots. Uh, that would be the time when you want to uh, to use the black dims. Okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and actually show you how to install them and show you a couple of tips. Uh, one of the first things that I like to do is I like to make sure all of my tabs are popped open. So all the ones I just closed, I'm going to pop back open. Um, and this is um, one that you don't have to do by any means. Um, I like to do it because I like to make sure that there's nothing fighting me when I go to install the module and that's just everything's nice and easy. My goal is to protect the parts, uh, protect the system, and make sure that everything comes out better uh, when I'm done. Okay. So the next thing that I wanted to point out is if you notice on the uh, DIM itself, there is a notch right here in the middle of all the leads. And really, actually, I shouldn't say the middle because it's not in the middle. It's not perfectly centered. So this notch known as a key is important because this is uh, one of the times where I see people were damaged DIMMs or damaged DIMM slots is they don't properly line up the uh, the module and they have it uh, flipped the wrong way. So you just need to make sure you have it flipped the right way. So in this case, we're going to install it like this. All right. And so the next thing that I wanted to point out is you will notice that I am not holding the module. Okay. The module is, uh, is it looks like it's seated, but it's not fully seated. So what you want to hear is the these two clicks. This one actually isn't fully going in, and that's a problem. So there it goes. And so that's just it. I didn't hear the, the click, so I needed to make sure I slid it in properly because it wasn't fully inserted over there. So I'm going to do it again, and hopefully this one will be a better demonstration. Um, but you heard the click on this side. So you hear that click. This side doesn't really click, but you got it really actually on this side. Just make sure it fully gets in. It seems like the tabs aren't really pulling it down so and maybe it's just this specific motherboard but that's one of those things you just got to make sure you have it fully seated and that's one of the issues we see uh, all the time where someone thinks that they have a uh, bad dim and really what it is is the dim is not uh, fully seated so make sure your tabs are uh, completely inserted because on the dims themselves uh, there's some notches carved out on the side and the tabs actually kind of clip in and pull the leads in and make sure that the DIMM um, is actually communicating with the motherboard. All right, so this is uh, how we talked about if you're only putting in four DIMMs, you want to put them in the four white DIMM slots. Now, this is the, uh, the breaking point in the sense of if you have two CPUs, you're going to come over here and fill these white ones up. If you only have one CPU, then you're going to want to continue on uh, filling the black ones up. Uh, you know, for the sake of time, I don't want to waste any much time, so I'm going to go ahead and just fill them all completely up and be right back. All right, so now we have uh, completely uh, upgraded this. We've installed 12 DIMMs. Uh, one of the things I like to recommend uh, at the very end, we keep talking about the tabs, especially since this one was being kind of tough, I like to just go in and make sure all the tabs are fully in. Sometimes you'll see one just kind of jutting out just a little bit, and, yep, everything looks good. So that's one of the things I, I definitely stress that point. Just take a couple seconds and just uh, double-check it and just make sure uh, seating errors are one of the most common things and then someone thinks they have a bad dim and it just leads to a whole bunch of other issues. Uh, if you do, if you're at home and you're wondering if you have a bad dim, honestly, just rotate it around, uh, see if it, the error follows the slot. That's the easiest way for you to check it out and figure out if you have a bad dim or not. So, all right, if you made it this far, um, do us a favor. We sell a ton of... Uh, Dell, HP, Super Micro, Cisco, IBM, you name it. Uh, we custom build servers for data centers all over the world. If you're using Dell R530s or any other server for that matter, data center, we'd love the opportunity to quote you. Uh, please email our team at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. If you made it this far, click that like, smash that subscribe. Thanks for stopping by, guys.